This is Dr. Mimi Lam from Metro Health Medical Center, and I would like to explain how the countercurrent multiplier works and what it does for us. As you know, our kidneys are very important in helping us to maintain a constant plasma osmolality. The kidney helps us to deal with small changes in piasm by generating a dilute urine to get rid of extra water or a concentrated urine to conserve water. The kidney's ability to generate a urine osmolality as low as 15 milliosmolar and as high as 1200 is made possible by an ingenious mechanism called the countercurrent multiplier. The CCM is located in the medulla of the kidney and consists of the loop of Henle and the capillaries surrounding it, which are called the vasa recta. The job of the vasa recta is to carry away the solutes and water that are reabsorbed from the loop of Henle and return them to the vascular space. The job of the countercurrent multiplier is to create and maintain a hypertonic medullary interstitial gradient with increasing osmolality towards the bottom of the loop as depicted by the shading here. This gradient makes it possible to create either a concentrated or a dilute urine. The hairpin or countercurrent configuration of the loop is important in creating and maintaining this gradient. The easiest way to understand exactly how the CCM creates a medullary interstitial gradient is to pretend that there is no gradient to start with and to plug in the numbers and the processes. So let's do that. We start with a simple loop of Henle in which the descending limb is only water permeable and the ascending limb is only solute permeable. Initially, in our hypothetical example, the tubular fluid and interstitial osmolalities are 300 milliosmolar everywhere. So remember that the ascending limb is permeable only to solute. Now assume that at any single point, a horizontal gradient of 200 milliosmolar can be created between the inside and the outside of the tubule. Solute is actively pumped out of the ascending limb, lowering its intraluminal osmolality from 300 to 200 and raising interstitial osmolality from 300 to 400. Water then diffuses out of the water permeable descending limb, equilibrating the osmolality of the descending limb with the interstitium. And now you can see that there is a difference between the descending and ascending limb osmolalities. Remember that at the same time as solute transport is taking place, fluid is actually flowing in the loop. So the more concentrated descending limb fluid rounds the hairpin turn and enters the ascending limb while new fluid at 300 milliosmolar enters the descending limb from the top. Now the process of creating a 200 milliosmolar horizontal gradient occurs, followed by water diffusion, allowing equilibration between the descending limb and the interstitium. And the result is this. And now you can see the beginnings of a vertical osmolar gradient in the interstitium. You can then repeat these steps and see how the gradient continues to develop. In the next step, hypertonic fluid again rounds the hairpin turn and enters the ascending limb where it is available for solute removal. At the same time, fresh 300 milliosmolar fluid enters the descending limb from the top. Again, a 200 milliosmolar horizontal gradient is created, followed by equilibration between the interstitium and the descending limb. Repeating the process once more, with fluid flow, a 200 milliosmolar horizontal gradient, and water equilibration. You can see that a nice vertical gradient of nearly 400 milliosmolar has developed. You can now appreciate how the loop of Henle, because of its hairpin configuration with the two limbs parallel but flowing in opposite directions, is efficiently able to use active transport to create a small horizontal gradient at multiple sites in the ascending limb and ultimately to multiply this small gradient into a large vertical gradient without any extra energy expenditure. As we've seen, the fluid in the descending limb becomes progressively more concentrated and as it rises through the ascending limb, solute is reabsorbed from it via the sodium-potassium 2-chloride co-transporter and this solute contributes to the medullary osmolality. Once the fluid reaches the distal convoluted tubule, it is quite hypotonic to plasma, 
50 to 100 milliosmolar, and what happens after that depends entirely on the presence or absence of ADH, which acts on the collecting tubule. At this point, if the body needs to get rid of water because plasma osmolality is too low, ADH secretion will be suppressed, water will remain in the collecting duct, and a very dilute urine will be excreted, allowing plasma osmolality to rise back towards normal. But if piasm has crept up and the kidney is trying to conserve water to bring it back down, ADH will be secreted, aquaporin channels will open in the collecting duct, and water will be reabsorbed and returned to the circulation via the vasa recta. Note that the osmotic force that pulls water out through the water channels is the vertical 1100 milliosmolar gradient of the medullary interstitium, which is created and maintained by the work of the countercurrent multiplier. One final aspect of the CCM mechanism is urea recycling. Urea is extensively reabsorbed from the collecting tubule because ADH also stimulates urea transport. Urea enters the interstitium and then diffuses back into the descending limb of Henle. In the interstitium, it accounts for as much as half of medullary osmolality, up to 600 milliosmolar out of 1,200. This is useful because urea then dilutes the sodium chloride concentration in the interstitium, allowing passive reabsorption of sodium along its concentration gradient from the thin ascending limb into the interstitium. At the same time, the ability of urea to recycle by entering the descending limb assures that its excretion in the urine will remain high, since getting rid of urea is one of the things that the kidney is supposed to accomplish. So in summary, the kidney has tremendous flexibility to either conserve or excrete water. The ability to generate either a concentrated or a dilute urine is made possible by the awe-inspiring design of the countercurrent multiplier which, because of its hairpin configuration, is able to use active transport to create a small horizontal gradient in the ascending limb of Henle, and to efficiently multiply that small gradient into a large vertical one with a minimum of energy expenditure. This, in turn, allows dilute urine to be created in the ascending limb if needed, allows concentrated urine to be made in the collecting tubule if needed, and thus allows urine osmolality to be adjusted in order to maintain a constant plasma osmolality so that large water shifts in and out of cells, causing potentially dangerous cell swelling or shrinkage, can be avoided.